Hello, and thanks for clicking, and you're very welcome. And thank you to everyone watching, and a big shout out to good friends in Connecticut, in Seal Beach, California, and in New South Wales. Today with my guest, we explore the world of classical dance, ballet, modern theater, school shows, musical theater, and how contemporary dance was introduced to a newly audience. Like so many before her, she began her performing career on the stage of Newry Town Hall in The Fish and was nurtured by many inspirational people who shared their love of dance and music and theatre. And she, in her turn, has almost 30 years of developing dancers and performers. Today, I'm in conversation with Leo Reynolds. In Newry, I think the mid 60s. I was young, yeah. And my first fish was a poem, I think it was called The Star Man, but my first teacher was Sean Hollywood. Right. And she, yes, my elocution teacher, and um, the first, he taught in um, a little hall, it doesn't exist anymore, at the top of St. Coleman's Park in Uri. And he didn't teach for very long, but I know that we went into the fish with Sean Hollywood. It's amazing to think that many, many years later, you and Sean worked together on Viewpoint Productions. I was playing tennis in Warren Point Park, and this would have been very late 70s, I think. And Sean Hollywood stopped at the wire fence of the tennis court. And I thought, and waved, and yeah, hello, Sean. Um, and then after our, our game, I was playing with someone, and he said, I haven't seen you for a long time. I have a part in a play for you. And this was so random. This was so, because I had done five years of university. And so I was kind of out of all of that. And uh, I said, oh, really? He said, yes, um, come and see me. So I went to see him and I can't remember the name of the play, but it was the part of the prince in a pantomime within the play. And right. Mary McEwen was in it. Um, it was a comedy and that went on I think it, it wasn't part of the festival. It was just on in the town hall in Newry. And that was my first venture into Newpoint. And then I did a couple of other plays. One was one for the road with Joe Smith and Sean. And we won the Ulster finals with that, the one act. When you roll back to those fish years, obviously you were very young when you started, but the fish had a community around it. I mean, there were people who said they, they nearly brought picnic baskets with them because they were there morning, afternoon and evening. There were baskets for hot water bottles for people who were playing the piano who were very good. There were baskets for food, there really were. And there were baskets for taking cups home in. But the fish was brilliant. We loved it. We just loved it. I still love it. In, in so. school then, you were involved in, in shows within the, within the school as well. Mrs. Bell, um, Arthur Burns, who was the Irish dancing teacher in school, and Mr. Troyman's. Brilliant, those three. And they were involved in our school shows. Um, Bird Cellar, Viva Mexico, and The King and I. And that was quite an experienced team that you were working with as well. When I think about that time and the people who gave of their time and their passion and their talent to us. It was just extraordinary. You know, Mrs. Bell, there was never, she just worked and worked and worked all the time. You stayed in after school, you worked during school. I'm sure, <laughs> you know, just hours and hours, Mr. Burns the same, and Mr. Turman, such a passion for music. Um, such a giving group of people. And I mean, it was the, even the teachers who did the set in school, the stage management. You know, it was just a wonderful experience. And just being in the show, just being in the course, it was just the most exciting thing. And then the anticlimax when it was over and we had to wait two more years before there was another one. Oh my goodness. Were you ever nervous on stage? Absolutely petrified. I know, petrified for music, petrified, piano fish. Oh, even now, even now, I can hard <laughs> on the piano fish. Oh my goodness, shocking. Um, I never went in for singing. I was entered for singing once and um, it was the lovely song, Where the Bee Sucks. And I was doing my practice the day before the fish and Mr. Turnman said, let me hear it again, let me hear it again. 
So I sang and he said, you know, I think maybe not the fish this year. <laughs> so I didn't actually go in. I never, I was always petrified to sing. One other name that would strike me as someone who was very inspiring in, in that era in the Sacred Heart was Mary Glaze. And Mary took performance, I would say, in a, in a direction that hadn't been uh, experienced in Yuri at all before that. Yeah, absolutely. And you know, Declan, Mary Glaze's story is a whole other story. It's a whole separate story. And I would feel that when I speak about her, and I hope I speak well about her and I cover everything that needs to be covered because I'm speaking for an awful lot of people who um, were inspired by her and encouraged by her. She was just incredible. We had her um, for Greek dancing. This was on part of, this was on our timetable because we didn't have a gym in the Sacred Heart at the time. So we this had- This was the old Sacred Heart. This was Sacred Heart in Castle Street. So yeah. we had- um, we had Greek dancing as part of our PE and we had Irish dancing. And so Mr. Burns took the Irish dancing and this new teacher, Miss Glaze, was teaching them. And our Greek dancing um, took place, actually, yes, her, she taught in the physics, like she taught physics, but her passion was dancing. So we were introduced to Greek dancing, which was a classical form of dance, but a very natural form of dance. Um, and for the first three years, you had to do it because it was part of your, your timetable. But uh, we loved it. it. She was so refreshing. This was somebody who had the most extraordinary ideas. Um, so after third year, you didn't have to do it anymore. It wasn't part of your timetable. But if you wanted to, you stayed in after school. So it became an extracurricular activity. So for the next four years, there were about six or seven of us of the same year or maybe a year lower who carried on with her and she took us through Greek dance exams um, and then as well as that she brought us to London for four years on the trot remember four, fourth year fifth year sixth year seventh year to the Stratford and East London Dance Festival she made our costumes for us choreographed all our dances in March off we went on the boat with all our costumes onto the tubes in London when I think of it, each one was given responsibility for some part of your co you know, costumes. Then on one year in 1976, when it was really the height of the troubles at home here, um, she choreographed a piece called The Tragedy of Ulster. And there were five or six of us in it. And she entered it for a choreographic com um, competition at the All England Festival. And off we went to this and we stayed at with her mother in her house. And we went off now all the top London schools were entered in this competition. And because we were from Northern Ireland, anytime we ever went to London, we felt a little bit inferior. We didn't really want to be heard because we had these Northern Irish accents and everybody else was so confident because they were English. You know, that kind of, that's how we felt about it. Anyway. When we entered this competition, there were three judges watching the tragedy of Ulster. And it was a very powerful piece. And we were dancing to the words of murder in the cathedral. Mrs. Kathleen Bell had recorded that. And the hall was full in London, massive hall. And at the end of it, we, there was a complete silence. I don't think from anybody, I don't like this. And there was just a stunned silence for literally about 10 seconds. And when you look, three judges were crying. And then the hall erupted in applause. And of course, we, well, it wasn't we, it was her choreography. Mary Glaze won the prize, the, the top prize for choreography. But it was such a moving piece. And that, just being placed and being recognized as being you know, excelling at something gave us such confidence. We didn't care about our accents after that. We just, we felt we actually can, you know, we're as good as anybody else. And that is the kind of confidence that she gave all of us. She was just fantastic. Even as you tell that story, Leo, and that's my first time of hearing that story of that performance, it's powerful and it's moving just to be told over a Zoom link. 
to have been in the hall as part wow. of the performance yes and to have it's that reaction from an audience must have really really lifted you and lifted your confidence it was a very very extraordinary moment in my life and i'm sure for the other girls as well in in that group and um, it, it was powerful it really was, and I, you couldn't ever forget it. It was wonderful. But that was just one of the moments that Mary Glaze was responsible for. I mean, I have spent over 30 years teaching dance. And yes, I did ballet when I was at school. My teachers were never local, so they, they came and they left and they came. It was a stop, start, stop, start with that. Um, but there was, um, Mary Glaze was a constant. So you had this enjoyment, it was never ending. Whatever you wanted to do, she would she provided for you. Absolutely wonderful. When I left school, I went to study at the, the it was called then the New University of Ulster. I did West European studies, which was French and German language and politics. Um, and I did that a combined degree with education. So that was a five-year course, two years in Coleraine. One year I lived for I, I lived in Grenoble for a year in France. Um, my major language was French. And then I came back and did two more years in Coleraine. But for my first year in Coleraine, because I came home most weekends and others um, in the Mary Glaze first batch um, were at University in Queens, we went to London at the end of our first university year with Mary and we did our first teaching exam. So right. we would come home at weekends and she would continue to tutor us. Um, and then for four years after that, my second year in university, a year in France, I did ballet in France, but um, then the, the last two years in Korea, I didn't really have an opportunity to dance because it was degree, degree, degree. Um, but then after that, I graduated in 1982, July, and I got married in August 1982. And I started... I started teaching, my first teaching job was teaching French in St. Pat's in Armagh. Um, and I started my own dance school then because I just, I just so wanted to be teaching dance just to bring it all back again. And I've never stopped. 82 was a big year. 82 was a massive year. It was a good year. It was a good year, yeah. With, with, with um, local societies, then you're involved in musical society, and we've touched on viewpoint and back to that. But with, with musical society, you were on stage in, in shows with the musical society. First show was Calamity Jane, Tommy McLaughlin, Sean Kearns standing on top of the piano. Mary Martin was Calamity Jane, she was fabulous. And um, next show was Irene. Oh my goodness, the costumes for Irene were just absolutely fine. Uh, all of this was Ray Jeffrey, of course. My favourite show with, for me, for the Musical Society was Gigi. Oh my goodness. I got the part of Leanne Dexamont. Mm -hmm. um, and again, costumes were just so fabulous. Uh, and the dancing was brilliant. And it was such fun. There, there, there's uh, a wonderful photograph in the, in the, um, the programme of Gigi. You're sort of pictured center. Mm -hmm. Center. Ethnic Keenan on one side of Sean Murphy in, in yes. the middle. And uh, yes. Sean, hopefully, we'll be talking to in, in the not too distant future. But Sean has uh, forged a career in contemporary dance and ballet as well. Yes. Uh, and uh, was influenced by Mary Glaze too. Absolutely. That is the other thing, which is so extraordinary. Sean lived close to, to me in Uri. So Mary and I, my sister and Posey, we all did Greek dancing. And Sean would be regularly in our house and he was intrigued by this dancing. And he, he loved it. He thought this was wonderful. And he went to Mary Glaze and he said, Mary, will you please teach me to dance? And she did. So many people were inspirational, but the two people who I would owe most in my work are Mary Glaze and Sean Murphy. Mary for her passion and drive on just the giving, just the giving 
and Sean for making me realize if you want to do it, you can do it. If you want to do it enough, you do it. He started a contemporary dance company in Uri in 1985. Yuri would have um, had experience of the musicals and musical theatre and Irish dancing and yes. the Greek dancing coming through the Sacred Heart. But a contemporary dance company to be based in Yuri, that must have been a first. They would have never seen the like of it. And I remember so clearly standing in Yuri Art Centre in the auditorium. Um, which is a very intimidating place to, to perform in, standing doing one of these contemporary pieces. And I am as close to the screen as I, uh, to the front row in the art centre. And we're holding on to a chair and the piece was called Baroque Chairs. And there were chairs from the town hall painted red. And we're just doing about 16 plies, knee bends. And we're going, chairs, Baroque, Baroque chairs chairs baroque and it went on like this for a very very long time and people in the audience were going, oh <laughs> absent and comments coming from the audience of course we had to keep deadpan straight face it was so new and so way out there now a lot of people didn't get it and a lot of people absolutely hated it but there were a lot of people who realized this is something that is going to take off. And of course, contemporary dance has taken off. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And, but it was very, Sean was very ahead of his time. And we felt so privileged to be part of it. Geraldine Fitzpatrick, Colleen Smith, um, Donald Fagan, and Mary and Posey and myself and Sean um, in that group. And I cannot speak with about Mary Glaze and Greek dance in the Sacred Heart without mentioning another most incredibly wonderful woman and that is Alma Brown, because Alma played, she accompanied all our music was live. She, she, all our rehearsals were Alma playing for us. And when we went to London, Alma came and played for us in London. She was so much part and parcel of what we did and we learned so much from her and we had such fun with Alma. Well, Leo, you spoke of the influences and, and two of the, the, the main people who influenced you, Mary Glaze and Sean Murphy, but maybe close the, the triangle with the other Sean, Sean Hollywood, and back to that moment, anyone for tennis, um, and your work with New Point players then, because you, you've been involved with New Point players, both on stage and in choreographing some of their big yes. shows. The most challenging one, I think, was um, Marasad, um, which went to, the, I mean, we had a run in the Peacock Theatre in Dublin with that. That was a very successful production. But movement wise, I mean, it wasn't dancing, obviously, but it was movement. And um, it was very subtle and very challenging, but very satisfying and just a whole fabulous experience. Yeah, no, Sean Hollywood was, well, I mean, I, everybody will say, will have their say about Sean, but he was so giving and could spot in young people a talent that maybe no one else could see. With New Point, you were coming to a company who weren't uh, possibly all natural movers or natural dancers. Was, was that a challenge for you in, in terms of trying to shape them and bring movement into those productions? Well, yes, it, it was, but it was a very welcome challenge because uh, it's, you know, it's all very fine to teach people who can dance, but it's, it's very rewarding to make, um, to make something happen with people who are not natural movers. And I suppose when you talk about uh, a cast who are possibly not all natural movers, I have some programmes here from St. Coleman's College, Fiddler on the Roof and Oliver and Joseph, and possibly a... a, a a, uh, a cast of students at school who have lots of different ambitions and lots of different backgrounds to to gel them all together into a school show but that's something you've given a lot of time to as well well Declan I have spent over 30 years choreographing in St. Coma's College and they keep asking me back <laughs> and every year they ask me I am so delighted I, re I love working with the boys. I, I love it. And then in more recent years, they have introduced girls to the cast. And I'd have to say that one of the, the most memorable performances of any professional show I have ever seen, 
um, or amateur show is a performance in Les Miserables by St. Coleman's College. And it was the part of Fontaine and that was played by Oshin Kearney from Warren Point. And it was from the very first rehearsal right through to his final night performance, it was spellbinding. And even now I've seen Les Mis so many times in so many different places. I always say, Mm, nearly as good as Oshin. Some fantastic performances, some fabulous dancers I came across in St. Comas. Yes, a lot of the boys, you have to try and make the move. You have to choreograph with what you have. And that would be the level of the choreography. But Pat McParland, who played the part of Mrs. Potiphar in uh, Joseph, that was the first show in 1988, um, brilliant. David Quigley and George M. That was when the boys got their tap shoes. He was fantastic. And the other brilliant dancer I remember in St. Comas College was Dominic Tinley. Brilliant in Oklahoma, I think it was. Fabulous. Yeah, brilliant. And, and again, you're um, part, part of a team there that uh, encouraged and nurtured with Miss Frame and music. And Sean Hollywood would have been producing for a while, Dec McDade producing for a while. Um, again, lots of people giving back into that uh, theatre space. Just uh, exactly, um, Declan. Sean Hollywood, um, such a fantastic producer, such a brilliant director for those boys. They adored him. They wanted to work for him. Um, Sinead, um, 1988, that was her first, her first year in the school, I think. So therefore her first perform, um, her first um, as a musical director. Um, Joseph, she, she was wonderful. I have enjoyed every minute working with Sinead Frame. The talent, the talent is just extraordinary. And how spoiled to go into that school for every show and for every single rehearsal that is going on, I have Sinead accompanying on the piano. I mean, how lucky can you be? She's wonderful, so giving. If you are interested in music, you are so lucky to have Sinead there. I suppose there were times when within shows things went wrong or there was something happened that just maybe wasn't particularly meant to happen within that show. Well, I can think of one particular, for, for example, with John Hollywood. Um, he would always, there was a knack there of introducing something kind of local into no matter what show was going on. And 1991 in St. Coleman's College was Ruddy Gore. And there was a scene, of course, 1991 was the year Down won the All-Ireland. And there was a scene in it where um, the chorus were standing on the deck, waving, welcoming the ship in or something like that. And of course, Sean had them all with their down flags waving <laughs> for the run of the show. I used to look back and think about those people, you know, the Mrs. Bell, Kathleen Bell, um, Mrs. Brown, um, I mean, there's Mary Goss there who's, you know, she's so talented. I mean, the costume she did for the play, The Shadow of the Glen, which we went to the Abbey Theatre with. I mean, Mary Goss just oozing with this Mary Glazish talent as well for me. But it's, I used to often think, will, will young people now have those people, have those inspirational people to give off their time? And yes, they do, because I am I, I am her mother-in-law, but I'm leaving that completely aside. As, as, and there's no one I think would disagree with me. The giving that Fiona gives to the young people who pass through at Flynn Performing Arts, it is just mesmerizing. The work she does, um, yes, we can see the wonderful productions she does on stage, the wonderful um, productions she has um, made on Zoom when we've been in lockdown, but I have seen the work that goes on to put all of that together, you know, into the little small hours in the morning. Just wonderful. Leo, if, if, if you were to look back over all the years, and it's always very difficult, but do, is there a favourite show that you would have? Either a play or a, or a musical theatre, ballet? With, well, my very, very, very favourite show is Jesus Christ Superstar and um, second to none it's just my favorite and um, 
ballet, Matthew Bourne's anything that Matthew Bourne choreographs. Matthew Bourne's Swan Lake, I think, is my favorite ballet. And I've seen the Kirov and I've seen the Bolshoi, and they are the most exquisite dancers. Perfection. But for a piece of theater to watch, Matthew Bourne's Swan Lake. And if, if anybody hasn't seen it, they should see it. Excellent.